to get into the game to swap out, and then the team is just like, what do we do now? I just... We'll see how things turn out there. It's probably going to be Juggernaut in the safe lane for S4. Not the hero that I've seen him play too much, but still a solid hero. Um, and this match for Virtus Pro is going to be a lot uh, more of the same. They're not going to be as heavily roamed early on. Like, there's not going to be that rotation mid from the clockwork like there was the Spirit Breaker to try to kill Arteezy, which, I mean, that was huge early on in the game. But um, they still have a lead mid. They have uh, they can have the Witch Doctor rotate in. They have the Earthshaker shadowing Arteezy probably, and they'll they'll do their best to take down uh, RTZ in this mid lane yet again, shadow him and make sure he doesn't get that farm to start things off. But again, it comes down to G has to farm well. They have to crush this mid matchup, and even that does happen. How well will they be able to take down Secret later on in the game? And uh, well, they're going to have some five minute aggression. BZZ walking up into the jungle croak. He's going to get spotted out. BZZ not close enough to use his rolling axes. They'll just make sure they maybe throw up a ward or two here in the jungle to stop Enigma from farming freely. They also see S4 walks in awkwardly from behind, but not going to go for anything. Virtus Pro just baking their home in this raiding jungle. Well, S4 did manage to... He's actually pinging out exactly where one of the wards are, so they know where that one is at the very least. I, th I think if you're five manning, you should ward more than just two camps, though. I think this is a little bit... I see this happen all the time, where they'll scout out maybe one, hopefully for their sake, two of the wards, and then they just... You know, Enigma will save gold like he's doing right now. He's actually saved 200. He might buy sentries, he might not, but honestly, he probably doesn't even need him. He's still got three camps to work with if he wants. I, I see this all the time. I feel like if you're going to try to punish the Enigma, why not go full out, you know? But uh, they're only punishing just two of the camps. We'll see, you know, how well he can farm just with that. And they've they've prioritized getting the Enigma to get all the items. He had enough money to buy clarities, and that was it. He could have bought the sentries, but it wouldn't have had any mana regeneration, so... He bought, like, a lot of the wards, I think. Kuroki bought yeah. boots first, so they really are... It's kind of greedy when you think about it, but at the same time, like you said, two camps, not a big deal. First of all, he probably won't touch the safe lane or the, the small camp. That's kind of Kuroki's thing. He He's supposed to, you know, pull that camp and use the pull-through, but Puppy has a big camp here to work with, a medium camp, and another medium camp, which is perfectly fine. That seems to be just exactly what he needs. Yeah. I, I The idea, I think, here is that... Um, since I'm running the jungler, my safe lane's gonna be a little bit weaker, so I need to make sure. They're actually putting a, lots of aggression on the Sadoi. Both of these heroes have boots. S4 is going in. He will get one more auto attack, and it's actually Kuroki who gets it. <laughs> and with the double boots on both of these heroes, they easily get that kill. S4 will take a couple of tower hits on the way out, but he'll be fine. TP in from the clockwork. He won't be able to find the kill. S4. They don't have a sal for him, so he might have to be a bit more careful. But they do get that first blood, which is huge for Kuroki. Starts things off, gets him already up to 500 gold. We talk about early blink daggers. That's one way to get it. Meanwhile, Jotam rotate again, looking for the courier snipe. Uh oh, Ooh. Bako. Dun 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 dun. He's kind of a slow hero. And yeah, he, he needs another awful. right click. Uh, Artiz is gonna get his bottle. He can't even get the courier. Jotam. <laughs> That's just super awkward. He's like, I'm so slow. Damn it. The rotation in coming in from Zai. He's like, I have to juke up to the top area of the map. He's gonna try to head to the top lane, and he'll he make it out. He has to walk left. He has to walk through the tower. I oh, think. he went the wrong way. Zai's gonna cut him off the pass. This is the slowest speed chase I've ever seen. This is super freaking awkward. Space created for mid, I guess. And yeah, bottom lane. They're diving past the tower. They're, they might kill Jotam here. He's probably gonna die. He'll Fisher. He doesn't have a TP scroll. He's underneath the tower. They actually have Yol rotating around the backside. What is this chase? What's happening? Play the Benny Hill music. Seriously, John, I'm getting chased down. He's like, I want to stop. He only finds Yol. They'll turn their attention to him instead. John's like, thank you, my friend. Hill Fisher, he actually might keep both of them alive. No. No. Dude, both look how yours. much... Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> <laughs> look how much time Arteezy's wasted now, man. He's level 2 compared to level 4 Lena. Oh my god, that is not the chase you want to go on. The Doi does get the kill on Kuroki. He almost died to S4, who didn't want to die the tower. What? How did that happen? I, I don't know. Kuroki got a... Yeah, he oh, got... He got cogged in the yeah. tower, maybe? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, probably. No. It, it's oh. Pitman. Oh. Battery assault. Okay. Well, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> that did just... You know, the crazy thing was that... In that chase around that, that top point. God. RTZ has two Necromancers. He's actually six last hits. G has 18. Uh, it's a bit of a difference, a bit of a gap between these two heroes. Oh, RTZ, geez. though, he's probably like, I don't care. I'm just going to have stacks in my jungle anyways. Whatever, I'll get back and I'll farm. It's not even a problem. That's the crazy thing. Well, G's missing some spells, though. He missed his first L or Light Strike Array and then missed a Dragon Slave there when he was last hitting. So if he's not connecting with the spells, it, 
Arteezy will bounce back and farm. This is just one of the best things about this hero. That Eve is, you can get arrowed five times by that annoying roaming Potom in the mid lane and just still come back with lots of good farm with raises. So He's somewhat holding his own, actually, despite the... Oh, there's his stun, actually. There's the LSA. All right, I talked about that for so long and he still dies, but... All right, and the Clockwork gets another kill bottom. Oh, Broke no Kuroki. Eve. Yeah, he, he's uh, he's had a bad couple of uh, moments here. And S4 is like, I can't help you, man. Just And Kuroki only has R S4, excuse me, only has 14 last hits. I guess that's not bad. But in comparison to the safe laner up in the top lane, yeah, BZZ is sitting at 24. This is, again, a, da a disaster start for Secret. Not it's... going well, but... That's, I mean... This isn't a gr the greatest lane for a dual lane against Clock. That's, I, I was thinking that, and that's why I was trying to say this is why they're giving them both boots, so they can have an easier time. I thought it would have been okay because they got the first blood on Clock, but I didn't see the other two kills. But Oh, and then a oh, hook actually comes in. from the Clock. Oh, no he has no mana for Blade Fury. S4 is going to die. It's going to be another solo kill for Sidoi. This off lane is good as you can get for this Clockwork. He's level six at four and a half minutes into the game. He gets a hook shot. Kill is his bottle. He's super farmed. They're going to have G go in. Light strike right mid. There's going to be the Earth Spike. Fisher. Kind of a weird usage of abilities. Laguna Blade not there. The mana just a bit out of the range. He just finally gets enough mana now, but they're already backing away. And the only thing going well for Secret at this point in time is the jungle, which is going to be that level six top lane, though. Zai had some trouble. Right click the Malphys. Maledict is actually going to kill him. He dies too. The Witch Doctor, the Maledict, getting the kill. It's five kills already for Virtus Pro. They're having a heck of a game, man. They, re they really are. Uh, that, that, that chase from Arteezy was such a mistake. It, it's really hurt him just because the level differential or difference is really showing itself in the mid lane now. Like, G, if, if he has mana for all his spells, hits one stun, he's, the, the SF is dead. Which means SF at this point can't even get in range for the race. So he's, yeah, he's going to have to go jungle and kick Enigma out. And just kind of make him move and maybe try to gank this Clockwork, who's actually level 7 now, which is ridiculously scary. Yeah, I don't even know how you deal with the Clockwork, even if you rotate Puppy in. Clock still might get a kill off the back end of a, of a weird fight. He is like two levels ahead of Arteezy at this point. It's turning into a disaster quickly. And also top lane, BZZ is super farmed. 37 last hits, he's having a good time. And 45, but a lot of those are from the Jungle Creeps. Obviously, all of them, in fact, are Puppy. And he does have... I think Boots flying out actually doesn't have him yet. He's going to have his um, headdress coming out. No Boots yet. He is level 6. He is really going on in the jungle right now. I guess that's fair. The problem... Okay, the one problem I see here now in retrospect for Secret's draft is that... Okay, they have the... They always draft this jungler, which is fine. Um, it can work sometimes with, with Shadow Fiend trying to share out the farm a little bit. But with a hero like Centaur, especially on Radiant, where your offlane is just weaker than Dyer's... A hero like Centaur, if he can't get anything up top, he ha like what does he do? He cannot just sit in lane, and it's not like a hero like Batrider or say Puck who can kind of afford to be a little bit more um, sneaky in the lane and run around and still get experience in different ways. Like Centaur just can't do anything. So, and, but now he can't go to the jungle either because it's kind of being occupied by two different heroes. So, it's kind of this this awkward um, this awkward thing happening with their draft where everyone wants to go to the jungle if they have a bad time, but. Unfortunately, two of them are having a bad time, which is both the Shadow Fiend and the Centaur. And actually, the bottom lane is just a disaster, too. So they've essentially lost every single lane. They've lost every lane except the jungle. That's that's the one saving grace for them. But even that seems like it's... I mean, it is going well for Puppy. He has a headdress really on his soul ring. He's level 7. He's actually doing Ancient Sacks with Zai, so he can get experience. Zai's level 4. Um... So that's a problem, because there's 11... Level 8 Clockwork. He's four levels ahead of the other offlaner. They had the top three net worth. Uh, Clockwork and S4 are jockeying between that third position. This is, uh, I think if you're Virtus Pro, honestly, you could put pressure across the map. I, you you do have to fight into Black Hole. That's kind of tough. And you only have a level, level two Earthshaker. But I don't know. BZZ is getting farmed. He's looking pretty good. I guess the question is, how do you get back into this? We talk about the jungle a lot, but Arteezy had to go back home. He's sitting on level six finally. Um, what is the CS? Like 35, so he's caught up a little bit. Again, a lot of those jungle creeps, but still. It's not looking... I, I guess they're down to 2,000 net worth. It is looking pretty bad, but it's not like they can't win. They can still win this game for Secret at this point. I mean, VP has a really strong laning phase lineup. They have a really strong... Like, I would say early-mid game lineup. And they're 
okay late game. Like, Lean is actually really good late game. Troll is obviously very good oh. late game, too, but... They black hole for Zidoy. And they probably get the skill. Earth Spike, S4 will come in to right click him down. They've rotated four heroes for the Southland Clockwork. It's Base worth created. it. It's worth it, actually. He's just been... He needed to be stopped. He needed to be killed or something. But mid lane, DD on to Lena as well. There's actually a smoked up Earthshaker City behind, which is really good because if if Arteezy pops his head in for one second, he's dead. Smoke is wearing off though in about one second, so not going to be able to utilize it. They might get two tier ones off the back end of that kill. The cask of Zai he doesn't have Stampede. Uh, Zai getting TP help coming in. Death Ward gets canceled, I believe. No, he actually didn't use it. He's level level five. I thought I heard it. Meanwhile. There's the Omni slash BZZ, he's still alive. He has a TP scroll. They do get the kill on Zai with the Maledict. There's the Blade Fury, or rather the Whirling Axes. Earth Spike will cancel the TP. That's a huge kill for Kuroki. That helps so much. And they'll defend the Tier Tower top lane with a couple of TPs. And that's big. Yeah, it was a weird pathing that he went because it actually goes in range of that Tier 2 tower, which hits really, really hard. So Nice there, uh... Nice return kills there from Secret. I really love how a lot of Witch Doctors are going back for this Maledict build. It's, you know, for the longest time we've always seen this Voodoo Restoration build, which is fine in some lineups, and I would say actually most lineups right now in the metagame, but I still think that Maledict is so damn strong when you have, like, good burst damage and good reliable damage on your team. And I've been seeing a lot more Witch Doctors do this, and it, it really makes me happy. And this is solid, honestly. Yours. He's just shooting out the damage. That's why they secured a couple of kills, honestly, specifically on Zai through Maledict alone. It's pretty solid ability. Joy, looking for the bottom rune spot. Has Treads, Wand, Bottle. Has Hookshot. They actually do get the rune for Arteezy. It's the bounty rune. Double damage again in that top rune spot. Jotun finally looking to get some experience here in the mid lane. Zai's level 5, so still doesn't even have his Tranquils, nor does he have his Stampede yet. He's going to get hooked on. Sedoi going to go to work. There's the Battle Trance as well. Zai getting low. Stomps up. Will he stay alive? Dragon Slave? Probably not. They use the finger. Sidoy's still alive. Double Fisher. Light Strike Array. Laguna Blade. Arteez is going to get right clicked down. No low ground misses for G. Not that it matters. He probably dies anyways. They get two kills. Very big fight coming out from both Sidoy as well as G on the Lena. Oh, and he's got a really nice like quad stack here that he's going to take out too. Lena, one of the better heroes too that can actually take out stacks that works in the mid lane similar to like a shadow fiend he has his yules man it's 10 minutes into the game he has his yule scepter it's flying out to him right now yeah, that's really really scary um he can pretty much solo kill anyone on the team i don't know if he can kill enigma with the mech up it'd be close but and then he, he probably can't kill the juggernaut either but everyone else is suspect Oh, mid Death lane. Ward, Puppy is going to take some damage. Yul has to back away, though. S4, TP did heal, Omni slash Yul. He'll die, too, for nothing trade. Here one tower will get denied by the Eidolons. Nice play from Puppy. That's a big turnaround fight. Virtus Pro, they got a bit antsy. They wanted that tier one tower. It was super low in health. And they tried to go for something that maybe they shouldn't have. And now Secret, we saw this last game. They took, like, one big turnaround fight. They proceeded to take the, uh, the advantage and the victory. And now they're bowling down mid with... Four of their they five heroes. This. They can easily fight this. They have Alina here, who has a Yules. Yep, there's a Yules. Here comes the LSA. And there he's the Fisher. Puppy getting low. Dragon Slave can mech up. He will not. He dies at the end. He already used it, in fact. Kuroki getting chased down. BZZ. They're not going to go for another one here. They're actually out of mana on the Lina. They defend their tier one tower. They get Puppy. Is the tower in deny range? No. Very close to it, but not there. Pretty big fight. G picks him in his room. Maybe they go top and try to kill Zai, who's still farming away. He's got Stampede. Already used level 6. Sedoi can hookshot if he wants to. He might even do it. Yeah, Zion, he's probably in some trouble here. Oh, yeah, for sure. He's got no he's got no blink. There's even the Yules to secure this. He's totally dead. But I was going to say that it, I really like what VP's done with their draft as far as ta tailoring it to play against Secret. Because Secret, you know, we talked about what can they do to get back in this game. They're really strong in the mid game. They seem to always draft this mid game power, you know, powerhouse of heroes. That can also transition in the late game. Heroes that, you know, have great timings on mech like Enigma, or that are just really innately strong with their spells like Shadow Fiend. Um, but they, you know, they push the, the tower there in mid, or at least try to, but VP has so much long range nuke that it's actually difficult to fight that. Morgan's Fishard, Hex is up, Kuroki fighting Jotam. Not the biggest target in the world, but still a target nonetheless. Tier 1 tower is going to fall. All right, the mid-game powerhouse for Secret starting to come into effect. They weren't really in position to defend that for Redis Pro. Lina still needs health and mana. S4 is going to get flared. Does a decent chunk of damage. Tread's now done finally for Arteezy. 
They'll keep going. They want to fight. They have the presence of the black hole. Jotham's back up to five. I don't know if Secret actually go for this. They're putting a lot of eggs into this pushing basket. And I think this could be a mistake. Yeah. This is going to well, be a tough Omni fight. Slash. They have Omni Slash cooling down, so they, they have that to work with. But No, they're going to yeah. back up. They don't want to fight. Yeah, and they got to be careful. There's a ward placed there by Enigma to give them vision of the lane. And they didn't get caught by Sadoi, so... If they see our TCTP top, yeah, they should just five-man bottom and take this tower. And actually, Enigma is just TPing back to behind our TZ. This is pretty much, a, I'm thinking, just to protect our TZ. Uh, maybe they're anticipating VP to just push bottom, but actually VP is going to go for a Roche, which is a much better decision, I think. They can always get that tower anytime they want, but a fast Roche on is going to be a little bit more effective. And they'll take this pretty quickly. And the, the damage from BZZ, Yol's helping out as well. They don't have a medallion, they don't need it. Let's check right. So yeah, they're, they're going to clean up Roshan really quickly. And because our TZTP is back top with uh, Puppy as well, this might be a trade. I don't even know if they could trade for this tier 1 tower. They'll fort, and by the time is going to go down, they'll be able to TP up to the top lane and defend. They will do yep. just that. Black hole onto BZZ, but that is the Aegis. That is the wrong hero to go on Puppy. You might have just made a huge mistake. He'll get chased down. Meanwhile, S4 does get the kill on the Yol into the enemy jungle. Stampede hook shot on oh, RTZ. He was TPing away. Sidoi finds a Requiem. Get a cancel the battery. So the dance of death. RTZ is going to fall as well. Turns into a two for one. I guess the Aegis, so a two for two as Yol died in the jungle, but still a much better fight for Virtus Pro. However... Secret are barreling down mid. They're going to try to go for this tier 2 tower. At least put pressure on it. Maybe Virtus Pro rotate over and try to defend this. Meanwhile, Alina picks up a blink as well. Still a great fight for Virtus Pro in that situation. Now, even though it was a better trade for VP, this is why Secret is still considered one of the, the best teams. Is that I, I would venture to say that a more amateur team would, would try to help out top and be like, yo, we can fight this. They'll help out top. But they realize that it's better to just split the resources and actually take other parts of the map. So even though they lost that exchange... They're still getting something out of it, which I think is really important to stay in the game. Um, also, that was kind of a misplay there by Troll. I think he could have lived, or at least held the Aegis, but he got a little bit greedy. And Arteezy, knowing that he was still dead, instead of just trying to can't, you know, cast the ultimate 100,000 times while the uh, battery assault stops it, he just went for a quick auto attack onto the Troll and killed him. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but I see a smoke on bottom. Kuroki, he's in some... Oh, he's dead. He was so close to his blink too, and that'll be delayed yet again. Laguna Blade, he'll lose 200 gold in the process, and he picks up an easy uh, Laguna Blade kill. He is up to 1400 gold. She is super farmed. Sitting at 563 GPM, that's pretty nice. His CS isn't really, I mean, it's it's up there for sure, but he hasn't really been farming that much. It's mostly he's been farming kills. He's 6-0-1. It's 6-0-1. That's pretty good. And uh, Virtus Pro, you mentioned a very good point. Secret, when they get the lead, they proceed to snowball out of control and take the game. Like in the last game, they had like a 2,000 net worth lead that just kept gone going, going in further and further and further in their favor. For Virtus Pro, they have this lead, but they can't really do much with it because Secret are splitting up the map. They're getting more farm elsewhere and they're juggernaut. They're getting kills around the map as well. So Virtus Pro are stuck at a 2,000 net worth lead when they maybe should be doing a bit better than this. And again, as the game progresses further. I think Secret have a better chance to take this game late and be able to take the game in general. Yeah, I, they're just, they're very efficient at farming. Like they spread out their farm very nicely. And if you always look at the net worth charts, it's always like, they're always losing on the top end by like one or two heroes or maybe just one hero by a lot. Like that, that one hero will usually be, like last game, for example, Lena had like 3,000 net worth over anyone else. But then everyone on the side of Secret had like a decent farm, whereas VP was much more like top and bottom. Man, I, I think that's really Secret's, you know, secret plan. It's just getting farm on everybody and then making sure that they can fight in the mid game. We'll see yes. if they can bounce back though. It's it's still a relatively close game. Yeah, I mean, somehow Arteezy is still sitting in an okay spot with his BKB done, like 500 gold. And when he gets that item, maybe they start really fighting. S4 picks up a Mask of Madness. Picked up Drum first. He's going to find Yol. Yol is going to fall. Ask. Death Ward, but doesn't do much. S4 gets the kill easily. Pick up, honestly. And not much you all could do walking up without vision to the high ground where he didn't expect a hero to be. They don't get the tier 2 tower top, but they get a kill, so I guess it's something. I hook was off the mark, unfortunately, from Sadoi. He's going to be checking top rune. Looks like Centaur is too, who still doesn't have his blink yet. Really unfortunate that after all these towers, so S4 coming in, he still has the Omni Slush. Yeah, they didn't have any detection, though. Yeah.
How's Kuroki doing in Splint Gold? He's about another 400. That's not bad, considering how this game went for him early on. He actually even is prioritized an Ancient Black Dragon, uh, so that he can do to get up there. Arteezy might be in trouble getting chased down to Doi, Battery Assault. His BKB Arteezy. is coming. BKB it's there, came. he's gonna use it, he's just gonna run away now, and G doesn't have his Aggro Scepter, so no Laguna Blade going through that BKB. Arteezy will back up. S4 is thinking about turning and fighting, but they see him, they have an Observer Ward here, so they could back up. Make sure they both stay alive. G hot tailing it out of there, high tailing it out of there, and obviously Zidoy as well. Now the blade coming out for Kuroki. They pick up a Yash for S4 as well. They have the BKB. S4 gets caught out. Blade Fury could go, but he's already in trouble. Omni Slash is going to fly. Zidoy is going to actually just make sure that Yol takes it as well. Echo Slam doesn't do anything. S4 is going to fall, though. G gets the kill with the right click. And they throw a lot for that kill, but they get it regardless. That's a big kill, too, because now, especially when you. When he respawns, they know that he doesn't have the Omni Slash, so if they wanted to be somewhat aggressive still, they could definitely do so. Um, Clock won't have a hook for a little bit of time, but his hook will easily be up before the Omni Slash, so... They do have some good timings, though, finally. Like, Centaur's finally picked up his Blink, Kuroki's picked up his Blink at the same exact time, just about. So they, they still have the means to fight. They have really, really good pick-off now. It's just a matter of getting picked up, or get, getting pick-offs before they get hooked, or something like that. Because if, if VP gets the jump, they will win. Because this Lina's going to burst down anyone before they cast spells. Especially when she's literally 200 gold away from her, her Ag Scepter. She's in a good spot right now. She's very close. She just started that point booster not too long ago. Now already getting her Ags here within the next couple of moments. And she'll have the rest of her team around her. Also, the BKB for the Troll Warlord is getting there. He needs the recipe. But he's still kind of a far away. And that allows Secret to fight. Because a lot of their abilities and, and ways to fight are through magic. And... They have the stomp, they have the earth spike, the finger, obviously. They have a lot to work with. And they'll smoke two heroes into the enemy jungle. They might find Yol rotating around the map into the mid lane. That would be a nice target. And they don't spot him out yet. I think they pinged on him. They might know that he's here. The rest of Virtus Pro rotating hook shot onto Arteezy. Has his BKB. He'll pop it. Requiem is going to go. The death ward coming up. Three man stop onto three. The earth spike onto two. They blow up three heroes. G is going to be the fourth to fall. He will blink away. Fisher comes out, stops the aggression. Jotam is spot out. No, he'll be the fourth to fall. Enchant Totem, nice blade fury from S4. That three man stop from Zai. They lined up for him and he just mows him down. Oh, man. And some, just that fight alone is enough for Secret to just all of a sudden take the net worth lead and throw it back in their favor. The fight recap, they've gained 2,000 net worth. They're going to get the tier 2 tower. Jesus. Are they oh, going to go for tier going. 3? They haven't even used mech. They have a DD on Arteezy still for a couple of seconds. It's actually about to run out. They have still. Omni Slash still available. They got Black Hole. They got mech. If they might still try to use some spells. We'll he does see. have Laguna Blade. All right. They'll back away. 3k gold swing, 4k XP now, leading in both. That's something else. Roshan's up as well. They'll TP bottom instead. Or top for Arteezy. Centaur Conqueror scouting out Rosh. But that fight, though. Yeah. Oh, man. That was huge. Really huge. Nice initiation there from Zion. As you mentioned, Lion coming in there with the with the impale of his own. And uh, I was going to mention one thing. Oh, yeah, Puppy. He, he builds his uh, boots to travel again, which... I, of course, I, I've said before, I'm not the... Oh, hook on to... Oh, there's a Yules, too. Kind of awkward. Oh, he gets off his Blade Fury. Laguna, though, it will go through that Blade Fury. That's a pretty big pickup, and uh, he just gets caught again. Yeah, the Ag Scepter is so good on Lena in, against this Juggernaut, which is why it was picked up, I think, really. Yeah. I'm trying to pursue someone, but I, I, like I was saying, I really like the Boots of Travel up onto Puppy. I'm not the biggest fan of the Bloodstone like he's gone in previous games, but looks like he's going to go for a BKB this game anyway, but... Boots of Travel just really helps you spread out the map a lot more. They're pinging out. Oh, they got him with the Yules. And they saw him. He does get the Hex off. He gets Elisade and BZ will just kill him. So, okay. Um, he got the ward off, I guess, which they didn't counter. They didn't see it was there. So, still not worth it, but at least he gets the ward down. Well, they know Roshan's up, too. No, oh, did you say you have a, a replay of the... Uh... Yeah, we should check that out. That All right, we're going to send it over to the replay. Pimp Muckle... Take us through that one more time, man. Ah, damn it! There we go. Oh, I forgot to unmute. Now we go. All right. Uh, just just quickly mentioning because there's not too much going on. Artizi was uh, just farming away once again. Really nice hookshot initiation. And then, well, everyone was lining up. Meanwhile, by the way, in the live game, the Roche is going on, but nothing else. And there is a crazy stomp. Everyone just gets absolutely wrecked to shreds. 
And well, like uh, Molpex was pointing out, this is such a huge gold lead. If you if you just once get in any sorts of lead position against this lineup of VP, you're once again going to be looking very strong in this game. And let's see how they close it out. Back to you, Mord. Well, they get Roshan for British Pro while that was all happening. That's a pretty solid pickup. Is that enough for them? They need a way to fight. They realize that this game is starting to dwindle. Uh, they have a couple of items coming out. I think they did get the BKB for the troll. It's on the stash. The curry will fly it out soon in just a second. What else is coming out? I think that's the only item that is any close to being finished. Sadoi has a uh, staff of wizardry. He's getting something. I don't think it's on the courier. Actually, it's a full four staff for Sadoi. So that's a nice pickup. Um, and that's it for the time being, I suppose. Everybody else is kind of doing their own thing. Kuroki's building towards an Ag Scepter because why the hell not? And yeah, for now, we're just kind of sitting back and farming, I think. And I think this benefits Secret a bit more. However, they are going to smoke up. They have. Four heroes, S4, not in the vicinity. This might be bad. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, the, the one scary thing and bad thing, I think, for VP is that this the supports are so underfarmed. Oh, which is they fine. were baiting our TZ and Sadoi gets blown up. All oh, right. God. Are they going to yeah. continue to fight? He gets oh, fingered. God. He gets blown up. Now they're going to fight. BZZ walks in. BZZ about to go down as well. G does. The Black Hole coming in. The Death Ward, though, it gets canceled. The cast flying through. Laguna Blade blows up S4. Now the Echo Slam on his eye doing a lot of work. But G still getting low. Getting right click down by the supports. The pitiful right click. But it might be enough to get the kill. It will be. Job TPing away. Yol's going to get out as well. They've lost three. Virtus Pro. Blink stop onto Yol. Kuroki finds him. The R Spikes are going to come out as well. The double edge. And another huge fight for Secret. Oh my. What's happening? Oh my god. They're just getting they're getting the jump on them before. Like uh Lena getting losing the Aegis right from the get go. Has she had BKB too? I think it's completely different, which he's getting very, very close to having. But the yeah, and then a really nice black hole there from Enigma. Caught two, I believe. I think it actually got cancelled by the the cask bounce. Yeah, it was bouncing through, yep. Yeah. Imagine, though, if like that Witch Doctor had an Ags. My god. I mean, I, I know it's only 25 minutes, but we've seen from a lot of teams when they pick up the Witch Doctor, they really highly prioritize that Ag Scepter onto him. And unfortunately, they're putting a little bit more emphasis on the Earthshaker getting his blink, which is fine, but I think it's a little bit better simply to have the Witch Doctor Ags. It's just, I've seen it completely win games by itself, even in situations where you're losing by 10k, uh, 10k golden experience, so. That's the really bad thing, I think, for VP. Yes, they have very farmed Lena, but these supports just have... Just really have nothing. Yeah, and the thing is, he, he went for Urn. He's nowhere even close to a point boost. Well, I guess he's getting close to a point boost, but not really anything else. And that's a big problem. He'll have his Ags at like 40 minutes, if that, at this point in the game. And that's already too late because I think this game goes past 35 to 40 minutes. And I think Secret have a pretty big advantage. S4 is getting closer to his next item. Uh, probably an SNY, even though it'll be a bit late. He's actually gotten stifled in terms of his farm. He is like fifth on the net worth chart. Arteez is the, the real, uh, the breadwinner for Secret at this point with his BKB SMY. And I imagine it will transition into a Scotty in the near future. And even on a, up he's ahead of S4. He has his BKB now done. He also has a gem of True Sight. So they're just going to start counter warding, make sure they have map control. And with that, Virtus Pro, they'll have to sit back. They could try to go for another smoke again. But I mean, these fights have not been going their way. So mm. it's tough. You know, Scotty is pretty good. I actually. I actually don't think that Lincoln's is a bad idea here. Hook shot in mid, actually, as it's just going to hit creeps, but I actually think Lincoln's wouldn't be that bad of an idea either, because if you pop the BKB, the only thing that will go through is the Ag or the Lena ulti, but um, so that would be like the only thing that could block, and it's the only thing that you really want to block, but we'll see what he goes for. I am very curious. Yeah, I actually like Lincoln's a lot, too. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, it's still a long time before he gets his next item anyways. Meanwhile, the BKB now done for Luna, like you talked about. That's pretty That's big. Huge. And they will go for the smoke. Okay, so they, they know that the onus is on them at this point in the game to make something happen. And they will do just that, or at least try to. They'll counter war the Observer War. They know where they are. S4 is going to TP back mid. If they have any idea they're smoked, they might have smoked right underneath this, this Observer War. I'm not sure. <laughs> Virtus Pro, they're actually going to just pass each other like two ships in the night, at least for the time being. Puppy, they're thinking about heading back towards the ancient stack as RTZ continues to farm. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro going for the tier 2 tower or looking at the hard jungle camp. Secret make their way into the enemy jungle. RTZ doesn't have uh, smoke, but it doesn't matter because they have no vision on the map anyways. So Virtus Pro have absolutely no idea where they are. Secret, conversely, have no idea where they are. 
Another they probably two tower top. They probably both have a good idea of what's going on now, but yes, yes. <laughs> so there's gonna be a Hastern bottom. Um, I don't think that VP wants to fight that top. I think you just let that go, push out lanes, farm a little bit. Hopefully they don't farm mid and like get caught by somebody, but they they need to fight in safer spots. Like I said, it's just very imperative that they get the jump first. They know G's mid. Shadow's going back home. They ping him out. Puppy was thinking about going in, but he's in a blink dagger. Artizi puts not even one right click on the tier three tower. He backs up immediately afterwards. Puppy TPing back home. They're gonna just get out of top lane. They're gonna push out bottom lane. Maybe go for this last tier two tower. BZZ. Uh oh. Malphus. He does have BKB. Black hole. Yeah, he's gonna use it. Artizi's gonna come in. Raise. Raise. Right click. BZZ falls. That's a big black hole usage and a big pickup as well. Farming the enemy jungle, maybe not the best idea. And they're going to find G as well. That's a huge pickup. He's down for 70 seconds. No buyback. Now I think Secret have a lot of room to work with here. Whether they want to push top and maybe try to go for a tier 3, maybe try to push mid, or just go for a tier 2 bottom. They have a lot to I work mean, with. They killed both cores of VP that are very, very farmed at, with relative ease. Complete, completely easy to do so. That's really, really scary if you're VP. They, they can't get picked off like this. Like, they just have to get the jump. They have to have his clockwork initiate. He does have his axe. Actually, he went for the force before the axe. So I thought he could maybe constantly just shoot out these ultis. But this would be a little bit more frugal with him, I guess. So I'm going to TP back. He has his force staff now, too. Kuroki, I'm assuming he has his force staff. No, he's going to go for the axe scepter. Okay. He's not even that far away, too, man. Like, 1,500 gold. That's frightening. Yep. Damage 1,025. The AOE is the big deal. If you get like a big stomp onto three heroes, the game's not over at that point. Kuroki just throws up his finger and kills almost everybody. That's when you know. That's going to be tough. SNY coming out for the troll a bit late. He went for the BKB first. So troll is not even really doing much this game. It really, I think, it comes down to their positioning in their fights. I just don't even know if Virtus Pro have enough to take a, a full head on five on five fight because I just feel like it's really just super tough. I. I think they do, and the reason why is just because with the potential of Lena being able to go through anything, they can kill, they can burst down anybody, theoretically. If they just get him stun locked, like a, a hook from Clockwork, a follow a stun from Earthshaker, and then a Lena ulti, that hero should be dead no matter what, even with the mech coming out. Um, so that that's the one thing they have going for them. But then you have to worry about if we use everything on, say, like Juggernaut, you still have to be careful because if you're all starting to clump up and get that kill, it's a very good, easy opportunity to get a black hole or double stomp or whatever. British Pro are heavily relying on these smokes. They are blazing it for days, these guys. Uh, <laughs> this is not healthy, I'm sure. BZ is going to head to the mid lane. Can't find anybody. Blink away. They they, they smoked down to the ward as Mop Packs pointed out. Thank you, Mop Packs. Secret, see them? G's going to jump in. BKB, suddenly the fight breaks out. Jotam gets jumped on as well. Omni slash onto BZZ. Jumps over to Jotam. Meanwhile, the Blade Fury. BZZ going to try to man fight. Battle Trance goes S4, gets bashed, I believe. Requiem on the high ground. It's a one for one. They've already lost Artizi. Echo Slam. They will take down a couple of heroes. Kuroki with a finger. The right click comes out as well. When the dust settles, it's a four for two. There might even be a four or a five for two. It's the door's going to get caught out. Zai gets the stop up. The double edge. Finally going to use it. The right click, five down. Invertus Pro, they lose all five. Secret lose both of their cores. They don't give a damn. Because guess what? Puppy bots is top. Has some illusions to help out as well. No Eidolons yet. They're actually pushing mid lane, but still, that fight might have just lost Virtus Pro the game. Yep, and not a single one of them has buyback. Everyone bought out items, so they can't even defend these pushes if they wanted to. And the supports are going to come up first, but they've used everything. It was actually a really impressive Witch Doctor ulti. It did a lot of damage. I killed off Arteezy. Imagine if, again, that was an Ang Scepter. It would have actually... Maybe even turn the fight. It was a very nice ulti, but just not enough. As the core Lena died, I think was the first one to die. Did yes. cast her spells though, but just died first, and that's not what you want. Fisher on Desai, but they've already gotten the Rex. They've they've got what they came for. Oh, here comes G. They have black hole. He's gonna pop it. Midnight pulls black hole. Zai's oh, like, I want to jump back in. Blink stomp. Maybe Earth Spike first. Stomp onto G, there's the Hex, G's gonna get double-edged, Hookshot comes in a bit late. BZZ finally into the party, they're going one by one into this team, but I, I think Secret have already gotten what they came for, they've gotten two quick kills. Uh, Kroki has already bought his axe, so even if he dies, he doesn't give a damn. He's probably going to fall as well, no point coming out the right click for BZZ, he does stick up. Ooh, might live, no, battle, whirling axes plus the flare comes out, Sudoi gets the kill. Two for two, Blink Dagger picked up for BZZ, but... 
Uh, they get two kills immediately, and I can't wait to see what this finger of death is going to accomplish now that it is an AoE. That is uh, that is going to be exciting. <laughs> oh, he bought out, huh? Oh, and then there's a Lothar's, apparently. The for Shadow Blade Zai. Centaur. Hmm. <laughs> All right, we're gonna. With that being said, we will send it over to Pimp Muckle for the replay. Pimp, what's up, man? Right, just once again, uh, because that was such an amazing Witch Doctor ultimate, like 12th mentioned already. You gotta say, G, Puppet BKB blinking in into pretty much everyone, and well, if you can't one shot someone, T Pops BKB, you're gonna be looking at a very bad time. And even though Yo was just looking at it go, he was having the time of his life right there. Killed out easy, yes, that's great. But I mean, let's face it, if you lose the fight anyways. And you're trading 4 for 2, this is something you don't want to have happen, so, well, back to you, Mod. And nothing happening in the meantime. Lots of farming, lots of pushing out lanes, top lane has been obliterated, the Rax is gone now. And the Puppy continues to push this wave in. The Agadim is now done as the line has respawned. No TP scroll, might be able to get rid of that Bracer now, but I guess he wants to hold on to it. Roche is going to go for Virtus Pro, they have to make this play. And Secret knows this is happening, but... They're not going to be able to get there in time. Instead, Secret just run down mid with Arteezy and Puppy. Uh, they're wrapping around, actually. This might not be the best idea. They don't have their entire team here. Arteezy backs away. They have an Observer Ward, so they know exactly where everyone is on the high ground there. By the mm. way, Puppy, this gem has paid dividends. Yes, the center does have the Shadow Blade. And we, <laughs> we're aware. Arteezy's walking in. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't Zai. know you could do that. <laughs> Zai's ready to blink stomp somebody. Hook shot first from Sedoi. Arteezy caught out. Laguna bladed. Arteezy about to fall. Stunlock pops his BKB at the end as well. All of a sudden, this fight not going the way of Secret Puppy. No black hole or spike. Blink stomp onto two. Kuroki, do it, Kuroki. No, oh, come on, man. You had a chance. No, he blinks away. He wouldn't have gotten those kills anyways, but still, that would have been amazing. Zai looking to get out, but he'll probably fall. Shadow Blades, they don't have the gem. Puppy still <laughs> has it, and Zai is actually going to live. What does she keep... Yes! We get it! He has the Shadow Blade! Hiroki Earth Spike. <laughs> this is... <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle it, man. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well... He gets out with the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Dota Fate, ladies and gentlemen. We like to have fun. Ooh, okay. All right. All right. Ooh. How, how do we recompose ourselves after that? I, I don't know. I guess Secret lost that fight. They lose two heroes in the process. That's a good start for Virtus Pro. Well, Lena does have the cheese, alright. In all seriousness, that's pretty damn good for her. She has buyback available as well. The, the important thing about that was Shadow Fiend did nothing. Like, he... I, okay, he bought the Scotty right there, which is the more, like, standard, quote-unquote, safe build. I still think that Lincolns would have completely changed it, though. Because he cast the... I don't know if he was completely stunlocked from full to nothing, though. But like I said, if you... If you BKB, you 100%, I think... Block the Lena's ulti. I, I don't think anything else goes through the Lincolns through once you have BKB on. I don't think maybe, so. Th maybe a, a passive stun from Troll? Does that no? Okay, Pitmungle saying no. So it's just the Lena. So, so just you know some food for thought, but he also might get it. If, if this game goes long enough, I think he he picks that item up. I'm pretty sure because he's been getting focused down a lot. I think well, see, you're right. I, I think. I mean, knowing Artis, he's probably going to go for a butterfly right now if if he gets the gold. Just because it's a safe item, it gives you good damage. It's, it's one of the best items for damage on Shadow Fiend, um, and it's good against Troll. But it's just food for thought, you know. Like I, I just feel like that's the one thing that can kill you is the Lena ulti through BKB, hmm. and that's what happened. Oh, Zion with a stun, kind of a precarious position. Hook, Hook shot onto the Yules. Zion's Shadow Bladed. They have is no he actually gonna They oh, finally dusted him. Dust Meanwhile, him, the, look, the finger him. of death does nothing on to BZZ. Croaky throws it up, and he's like, "I'm out of here. Peace. See you later." The dust did not hit him. Oh boy. Alright, Kuroki, he does not get maimed yet. Tons of auto attacks, he's slow by 30%, but he's not maimed. Oh, please. He says he can't get the maim to save his life. Hope he's gonna TP out too. Yeah, that's, uh, I, that, wow. I think Zai should be dead. Not, he survives. Shadow Blade, pretty good. Pretty good item, apparently, for Centaur, where you don't carry detection. No gem, obviously. <laughs> Dust is available, but they've already used it. 
Oh, that's rough. Zai's actually gonna try to initiate with the Shadow Blade. Oh, they have no idea. They have no idea. Zai, look at the jump in. He's trying to find the best bang for his buck. Can't necessarily mm -hmm. find a two-man stomp. They're spread out pretty well. Instead, he just goes right into BZZ. Meanwhile, Echo Slam goes, Laguna Blade, G trying to find S4, they're gonna chase after him, he pops his BKB already. Requiem goes, Yol taking some of that damage, gets right click two times, dies. Hook shot from Sedoi, BZZ jumps in, Black Hole on oh the two, Puppy God. bringing down the house, four dead. Aegis expended for BZZ, Artiz is about to go to work on him. Now there's the BKB, Kuroki's like, I already used my finger, they blew everybody up in those, uh, that pretty big Black Hole. Zai gets the double kill, four down, and now it's, I think, time for... Secret to head down mid and try to finish this game off. Oh god. I mean, what happened? It looked like they all got cogged in by Clockwork, which held them in place. I think To so. set up an easy black hole. I didn't see the, the beginning of that. I was watching, um... I was watching G come, or get out of the fight. And actually, double buyback coming here, but there's no buyback on Alina. And that's really big. Yeah, I mean, the troll can do work here, but... No Echo Slam. Hookshot is, well, he's got an Aghanim Zipper. No, he, he doesn't actually. He only has the one Hookshot to work with. Um, they don't have anything really. They're going to lose this Rax for sure. This this might be the end, honestly. The Ancient They've now exposed. There's going to be the Earth Spike. No finger. Croaky has to Mana Drain, but it actually gets canceled. Sedoi so Hookshot's in on the Puppy. That's probably not the target. The Death Ward going to work. Puppy about to fall. Artis is right clicking BZC. They blow up poor Yol Sedoi. In trouble as well. He gets right clicked down. All five dead. GG called. And Secret, despite their disastrous start in the beginning of both of these games, it doesn't matter. They take both games handedly at about 30 to 40 minutes at each game and absolutely trounce with this mid, -like, mid game lineup. They are now moving up to four and one. What a fun series, man. What a good game. I mean, you can see the strategy and play individual talent there is for VP. Like, Sadoi just crushed bottom lane. Absolutely dominated bottom lane, even after giving up first blood. That's pretty impressive. Um, they both had boots, so it should have been theoretically easy for them to, you know, kite around the, the clockwork so he couldn't get them caught up into his cogs plus battery assault, but he outplayed them. I didn't see the first two kills, but I saw the last, the third one, which is the hook, because he was level 6 when S4 was level 4. Uh, so he outplayed them, but it was just the better team, like, composure for Team Secret. Like, they, they kept their cool, they just farmed up on everybody rather than the, just, like, one hero getting the all, all the farm. And they just kept their composure and played better in team fights. Yeah, that, I guess you could say just Secret looking like the stronger team at this point. And Virtus Pro had had a lot of advantages early on in this game, and they just couldn't secure the win. So they'll go down 0-2 here in this series. Virtus Pro, though, still a very strong team. We'll have to wait and see how they perform in their next match. However, tomorrow, our next match, starting at 1700 CET, 11 o'clock Eastern Time, C9 versus NIP. Actually, it's 1800 CET, excuse me. So 12, 12 o'clock Eastern Time. So that'll be our game tomorrow. The only game we have, in fact. And guys, I look forward to bringing the action here. Alongside, of course, our High Ground TV production studio. We got Pit Muckle. He'll be doing it and handling the production. That's right. At Pit Muckle. You can check him out. You have Mott Packs, our stats man, at Mott Packs. Of course, by Cocast. You can find him at Trelf, at Trelf Dota. And, of course, myself, at Mott Dota. With that being said, guys, make sure you check out the giveaway for Gamers Book on their Steam page. The Arcana giveaway. The CM Arcana as well.